Today we're on the phone with author John Ingham talking about his book Spirit of 76, London Punk Eyewitness. John, how are you today? I'm doing very well, Dustin. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's great to be speaking with you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the new book you got, Spirit of 76, London Punk Eyewitness. Uh, Definitely a -a one-of-a-kind book for sure. Can you tell the listeners a bit about it? Well, it uh, came because at the in 1975, 76, I was a rock critic writing for a London weekly music paper, and I was the first person to interview the Sex Pistols in April of 76, and then just spent the rest of the year uh, seeing and writing about every band as they came along, whether it was The Clash, Buzzcocks, Damned, and uh, on into the, the future. So as a rock critic... Um who were some of the bands, I guess, you were covering around that time before uh, the Sex Pistols came on the scene? Um, I was a senior writer, so I was doing interviews with Jimmy Page, uh, going on the road with the Rolling Stones. Uh, Leonard Skinner was another one that we spent time with. Basically, whoever was uh, in the top, say, 20 of that period. So, yeah, uh, Leonard Skinner, Jimmy Page, uh, definitely uh, a different animal than uh, the Sex Pistols. So when did you sense, I guess, that something big was happening or maybe a movement was taking place with this new uh, genre? Um, Well, I was forced to meet the band's manager before I could talk to them. It was a guy called Malcolm McLaren, and he ran a clothes shop on King's Road called Sex. And he had a manifesto, and he was really driven to start a movement out of this. And... uh, the power of his conviction carried me along with him. So, yeah, I suppose after a while you kind of maybe realize that you covering these bands is helping to to make the scene happen in general. It was a conscious decision. Uh, I decided, once I decided that it was something to get behind, I seriously uh, wrote it as propaganda to be exciting to 15- and 16-year-old people. And the great uh, thing about the book, Spirit of 76, London Punk Eyewitness, uh, a lot of great photographs, uh, a lot of them in color. You don't see a lot of uh, color photos of these old bands around the time when they were starting up. Well, I decided to pick up a camera because I really liked The Clash, and they were very, very colorful. It was like Jackson Pollock had decided to dress them. Everything was spattered in paint, and they'd painted slogans on their, their trouser legs and on their shirts. And no one was photographing it. And at the time, uh, black and white was the commercial photography, so no one was shooting color either. And uh, because I came at it just to record it, I was shooting color film and shooting black and white both. And I was the only person doing any of that. And that's how, what makes the book special, is that it's the only color from that period. Well, John, uh, what were some of your, the other journalists around that time thinking about this new music? And I guess you may be abandoning uh, the the uh, top 20 and heading this route? Uh, It was very much a dividing line. People thought I was really crazy. Uh, More than one person said, you're destroying your career, you do realize. (laughs) And um, finally I said, well, if you're going to talk about it and put it down, come and see it. And so people would come and see it. And then you'd have someone who's 23 years old going, I feel really old. So in that sense, it uh, was, um, yeah, it was definitely a a break. And the interesting thing was, who were the first people that came down to the Roxy, which was the punk club? And it was Led Zeppelin, who were very interested to see what it was about. So, yeah, some of these, uh, I guess, rock bands, you you could say, were getting maybe a bit too too big, too bloated, maybe, for lack of a better term, around that time. So, I mean, punk obviously was, you know, kind of stripping it back down to to the basics. Uh, very much so. I mean, and I think we all agreed on that. The Clash had a song called No Elvis Beatles or the Rolling Stones in 1977. And that's how we felt. And uh, you know, the Rolling Stones had played in London, and it was very, very poor. They were very full of themselves, very um, sloppy. And so it felt very much like it was a reaction to that, and it was time for young people to start making their own music. So around that time, uh, could you point to a band that you would say was your favorite to, to cover around that time? Well, without a doubt, The Clash. I mean, the Pistols were amazing just because of John Rotten. You know, that, was, that doesn't come along more than every few years, say, you know, where he's so charismatic uh, that it swept everything. But The Clash as a band were extraordinary. It does seem nowadays uh, the Sex Pistols and the Clash, uh, usually the ones that uh, are remembered from maybe casual fans at least, but uh, you mentioned some of the other bands, um, you know, the Buzzcocks, Amazing, and the Damned, and some a lot of these other bands may be a bit overlooked from that time period. I agree with you. I mean, the Buzzcocks made an incredible array of 
singles that were pretty much about modern life, you know, how do I survive? Uh, the Dan were just high energy and a lot of fun. Um, I started managing, actually, in 1977, a band called Generation X that had Billy Idol in it as the singer. Uh, you know, so there were things, people were starting and it, it and came out of that. Susie and the Banshees is another one. Just four people got up on a stage and started playing because they wanted to do it. No training, no technique, just let's do it. Well, what do you think of, uh, I guess, how those bands are received now? Uh, maybe a bit of irony that the Sex Pistols, you know, are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and, you know, you can buy Clash shirts at Walmart and that sort of thing. It's interesting how it's all evolved. Uh, indeed. In fact, there's um, a quite famous book in Britain called Revolt into Style, which is exactly about that, how in the end it all becomes commodified and, and it becomes fashion. But I guess in a way that's a, the... Same thing with my book, you know, Spirit of 76, London Not Punk, Eyewitness. It's about being at the beginning of a revolution, and here we are now with a book to talk about it. Well, and of course today um, there's still bands out there that are considered punk bands, I guess, but um, do you think something like this could ever happen again in music, like a sort of a changing of the guard in a sense? Oh, I think so, and I think, you know, a lot of what drove the original punk scene in London was that the social conditions and the political conditions were very harsh, and people didn't have much of a future. When he sang No Future, he really meant it. And I think we're seeing a, a social and a political conditions coming back very similar to what was then. And out of that, you're going to get some very angry people, and they're going to start talking about it in a way that's truthful. So, yeah, I think it'll happen. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what shakes out here, especially nowadays, as you mentioned. Uh, and again, uh, the book Spirit of 76, London Punk Eyewitness, is out now. Is there anything else maybe in the works or something else we should look out for? Uh, I'm thinking of taking some of the images and blowing them up into sort of gallery-type images and um, just uh, moving forward, really. Awesome. Yeah, it's great that this book is out Um you know, if you hadn't had the foresight to uh, to take the camera with you, a lot of these bands uh, probably wouldn't have been documented, and no one would have uh, would have seen this scene happening, especially here in the states. Well, I I agree, and that's why I did pick up a camera because no one else was photographing it. Awesome. Well, again, John, I appreciate your time, and uh, the book is great. Spirit of seventy six. Uh, thanks a lot for being on with me today. Well, it's my pleasure, and thank you again, Dustin. And again, that was author John Ingham talking about his book, Spirit of 76, London Punk Eyewitness, a great book for all you punk rockers out there.